I've ridden this 2022 Indian Pursuit for nearly a month and put just under a thousand miles on it. So do I think this is a better motorcycle than my 2018 Honda Goldwing? Well, let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome to my comparison of the 2022 Indian Pursuit to the 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT. Now, it might seem unfair to compare a 2022 Indian to an older 2018 Goldwing, but I'm going to take into consideration any changes that have been made to the newer Goldwings, and I'll factor that into my evaluation. Now, as I stated previously, Indian has loaned me this pursuit so that I could review it for my YouTube channel. But they're not sponsoring this video. No money exchanged hands, and they didn't pay me to say wonderful, glowing things about this motorcycle. They'll see this when you see it. Now, in case you haven't seen it already, I have a full, complete review of the Indian Pursuit. Check out the video. I'll put links up above and in the description of this video. So the way I'm going to be doing my comparisons and my ratings is by breaking both of these motorcycles down into many different, very specific categories. And I'm going to give a point in each category to either the Indian or the Honda based on which motorcycle I think is the, in the best in that category, but for me. This is not a fair, objective comparison. These are simply my ratings based on my riding experiences and my riding style. You could come up with completely different conclusions. But at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you which of these motorcycles is the best for me and who I think each motorcycle is better for. So let's get started. Let's start with styling because styling is so subjective and it's really a matter of personal taste. Now, I'm going to give a point to both bikes because I personally think they both are good looking bikes with modern styling. When it comes to seat comfort, however, the Indian is going to win hands down. The seat on the Indian Pursuit really has nice stitching, it's very cushy, and I found it to be very comfortable. In addition to a more comfortable seat, when it comes to leg room, at least for someone like me at six foot two with a 33 inch inseam, it was nice to be able to stretch out my legs on those long floorboards. And the addition of the highway pegs on the Pursuit kind of gives this point to the Indian hands down. The Pursuit electric windscreen was adequate but no better than the OEM Honda windscreen. I'd say this one is a draw. So what about lighting? Well, both bikes have all LED lighting. The Pursuit only has a single LED headlight, and I just didn't feel like it was as bright as the headlight on my Goldwing. After multiple rides in the dark early in the morning, I still feel like my Goldwing lights up the road better than the Indian. None of the hand controls on the Pursuit are backlit, so Goldwing is going to get a win on lighting. So if you're passionate about motorcycles, I'd like you to take a second to remind you, please click that little subscribe button down below, and don't forget the notification bell. That way, when you go back to YouTube the next time, it's going to let you know if we have any new videos out. So now, let's get on with our comparison of the Goldwing to the Pursuit. I found the rear view mirrors on the Pursuit to be a little small for my liking, and I didn't care for the fact that they were mounted to the handlebars. You really notice this when you're backing the bike into a parking spot. When you turn the handlebars, you can't use the mirrors to see what's behind you because if you're turning them, they're aiming the wrong direction. I much prefer having the mirrors fixed to the fairing. So that's a win for the Goldwing. As for the dash and the display, there is no competition. The Ride Command touchscreen blows away the Goldwing's underutilized color TFT screen. Why Honda can't advance this, I don't know. When it comes to easily accessing information on the dash, the Pursuit design wins again, hands down. On the Goldwing, I have to scroll through screens to see tire pressures and I can't see both tires at the same time. But on the Pursuit, I can see both tire pressures at the same time, 
I can even customize the screens with these little movable widgets. No comparison. Again, when it comes to navigation, the Pursuit wins because it has a better overall interface and integration. The Ride Command website is the best route creation tool I've seen so far, even better than Basecamp. The navigation's not perfect, nor is it as good as a standalone Garmin Zumo, but it's much better than Honda's integrated GPS, which hasn't been updated for a couple years, by the way. The Bluetooth connectivity on the Pursuit is far superior to the Goldwing. Pairing a smartphone or a headset is straightforward and connections are very reliable. My Cine headset connected every single time I started up the Indian. I can't say that for the Goldwing. Honda's Bluetooth sucks. I have to turn off the Cine, turn it back on, sometimes two or three times to get it to connect to the Goldwing. When it comes to physically connecting and storing a smartphone, I'm going to give the point to the Honda. As stupid as it is to have a thousand dollar or more smartphone stored in the center pocket where it can't be locked, the Pursuit smartphone cubby also can't be locked and I think it's smaller. In fact, I'm not sure if one of today's larger smartphones would even fit in the Indian cubby like a iPhone Pro Max. So I'm going to give the point to Goldwing for this. What about hand controls? Now I find that both bikes have hand controls that are easy to reach. The Goldwing's advantage is that the hand controls are backlit, which is a big plus in my book. But the turn signal integration on the Pursuit is so much more intelligent, as is that little audio joystick then I'm going to give another point to Indian for the hand controls. The Goldwing gets another point for offering Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Indian offers CarPlay, but no Android Auto. Both motorcycles require the use of a Bluetooth headset for CarPlay to work, but a point goes to Goldwing for at least offering Android Auto. Homelink is an option on both bikes, but the installation of Homelink on the Indian can be done by anyone in about 10 or 15 minutes, while the Goldwing owner is forced to spend hours to install Homelink or pay a dealer a couple hundred dollars. That's another win for the Indian. So let's talk about the radio. I've been complaining about the poor AM FM reception on the Goldwing for years, and the BMW had an even worse radio than the Goldwing. But apparently, Indian has figured out this 1940s technology and offers excellent AM-FM reception. So Indian gets a point for having a better radio. But wait, Honda offers Sirius XM, and Indian does not. So Honda gets a point for that. The Pursuit has the best onboard computer of any bike I've ever ridden. I said the exact same thing about the BMW, but that was before I rode the Indian. The Goldwing doesn't even come close. Once again, on my wing, I have to add a cheap Chinese voltmeter to, my, to monitor my battery. On the Pursuit, I can see the voltage through the Ride Command screen, along with tire pressure, fuel range, engine temperature, and a whole lot more. So it looks like the Pursuit has a lead on the Goldwing in points. Can the Goldwing make a comeback? Well, when we return, we're going to talk about the engine, performance, braking, and a lot more. So when it comes to engines, both of these motorcycles have excellent power plants, albeit they very different. The Pursuit has this huge V-twin that has stump-pulling low-end torque. The engine, however, is the smoothest V-twin engine I've ever ridden. Of course, it produces that V-twin rumble that so many riders love. The Goldwing engine is more refined, but still offers plenty of power and low-end torque. Both engines are excellent in their own ways, however. For me personally, I feel like the Goldwing engine is smoother and it fits my riding style better.
When it comes to the final drive, I guess I just prefer the feel of a drive shaft. The belt drive on the Pursuit is smooth and certainly preferable to a chain drive, but I prefer a shaft drive. When it comes to handling on twisty roads, I think the Goldwing wins again. However, that big Indian is definitely no slouch in the handling department. Low speed handling, however, is not even close. By comparison to the Goldwing, the Pursuit feels cumbersome and top-heavy in parking lot duty because of that big V-twin engine and the top-mounted fuel tank. Both bikes seem to handle the wind well with excellent fairings and windshields. However, when it comes to overall protection from the elements, that massive frame-mounted fairing of the Pursuit combined with the lower leg fairing bests the Goldwing. So now how do I compare this six-speed constant mesh transmission on the Pursuit to the Honda DCT? Because it's not really a fair fight. And once again, this is very subjective, but I'm going with the Honda's DCT. The Pursuit six-speed is very good. And unlike the BMW I tested, it's very easy to find neutral. If you're a manual transmission guy, however, I think you'll be pleased with the performance of the Indian Pursuit 6-speed transmission. When it comes to stopping both of these bikes, I think the Goldwing might have slightly better braking. The Indian Pursuit also has drag torque control, dynamic traction control with cornering control, and ABS with cornering control. This package of electronic handling controls is far superior to Honda's HTSC, whatever that is, so a point goes to Hendian. As for drive or ride modes, the Pursuit has three of them. Standard is comparable to the Goldwing's Tour mode. Pursuit and Honda both have a rain mode for riding on wet roads, and both bikes have a sport mode for performance. The Goldwing has an econ mode for fuel savings, so I'm giving a point to Honda. I was really surprised by the suspension on the Pursuit, pleasantly surprised. It delivers the smoothest, most compliant ride I've experienced on any bike, yet still offers great handling. The electronically adjustable rear suspension can be set to any of three preset modes and then fine-tuned incrementally to offer maximum customization for a variety of riding conditions. In my opinion, the suspension was superior to that on the Goldwing. Kind of surprising. When it comes to a passenger, I think the Goldwing may offer just a little more comfort. The pillion sits up very high on the Pursuit, which is going to make wind protection an issue. Nevertheless, this is only a slight nod to Goldwing, because the pillion seat on the Pursuit may be more comfortable than the Goldwing. If you ride with a passenger, put some comments in the comment section. Let me know what your feelings are. As for gas mileage, again, I think the Goldwing is more economical. A combination of highway and city riding, my Pursuit averaged about 36 miles per gallon. My Goldwing routinely gets 41.4 miles per gallon. But the Pursuit does have an extra half gallon of fuel capacity on the Goldwing with its six gallon tank. So right now the Goldwing has a lead on the Pursuit in points. But in the next section of this video, things could change. So don't go anywhere. Next we're going to talk about storage, paint quality, fit and finish, and a lot more. Overall, the storage capacity of the Pursuit is far superior to that on the Goldwing. The top-loading saddlebags are massive. I have no trouble getting my laptop in one of those saddlebags, even with the cover on or the case. The trunk on the Pursuit is equally large, with more than enough room to hold two helmets with space to spare. When it comes to cubby storage, the Pursuit gets another point for having nice, deep cubbies in those leg lower fairings and two smaller cubbies in the main fairing. This Pursuit has the premium package with black metallic paint. I think the paint finish of my Goldwing is superior. There's more metallic in the Goldwing paint, and it really pops in the sunlight. 
Also, this Pursuit has the softest clear coat I've ever seen. I'm giving Honda the nod on paint quality. Both bikes have keyless ignition, but the Pursuit's emergency start procedure is much more elegant and simple, while the Goldwing is complicated and clunky. So another point to the Pursuit. If the key fob is lost or damaged or stolen on the Pursuit, the owner simply needs to enter a four-digit security code to start the bike, while the Goldwing requires a lengthy, complicated routine. Both bikes come with heated grips and a heated seat. I found the interface to control the heated seat easy to use on both bikes, so I'm going to give a point to both. Now, the Pursuit is going to win the battle of tip-over protection. The Indian has these large chrome tip-over bars, both front and rear, that look as though they would protect the fairing and the saddlebags better than the Goldwing's kind of small, wimpy tip-over bars. And you're going to need them on that Pursuit, because as top-heavy as it is, you're more likely to drop it in a parking lot. When it comes time to wash your bike and maintain the look, the Pursuit is going to be the easier bike to keep clean. Goldwing has all these little weird nooks and crannies hard to get to. Now, what about maintenance? Well, the air filters on both bikes are kind of buried, but the Pursuit only requires the removal of the fuel tank. Not fun, but it's better than disassembling the entire bike. I do prefer the battery location on the Goldwing, but how often do you really maintain a battery? I could find no mention of a need for valve adjustment on the Power Plus V-Twin engine. So if that's the case, that's a lot less maintenance cost. And Indian does provide a lot of maintenance information in their manual, and they offer some maintenance videos on their YouTube channel. So I'm going to say that the Indian is probably the easier bike to maintain. Just needs a center stand. The Goldwing has Hill Start Assist and the Pursuit does not. The Goldwing has a reverse gear. The Pursuit does not. The Goldwing comes standard with a center stand. The Pursuit does not. Also, the Pursuit requires premium fuel, and the Goldwing runs just fine on 87 octane. Another point to Honda. I can't really compare these two bikes as far as reliability. I know the Goldwing's reputation for reliability, and I'm comfortable with it. But I don't know as much about the Indian. So if you own an Indian Pursuit or a Challenger, please weigh in with your comments below. Now, I don't think there's any question that Honda Goldwing owners benefit from having a larger dealer network, at least in the U.S. and Canada. Europe, I have no idea. So I'm going to say that Honda gets a point for having that vast dealership network. The Honda Goldwing also comes standard with a better warranty. Three years unlimited mileage compared to a two-year on the Indian. But I am giving Indian Pursuit a point for providing a battery tender SAE port on the dash. That's very cool. As for the audio system... Both bikes are equipped with four speakers, two front, two rear. But the sound system in the Pursuit is much better, in my opinion, than the Goldwing stock system. I mean, the front speakers on the Pursuit are huge by comparison. I tried to include some music in my last video, but YouTube gave me a copyright strike, so I couldn't do it. So let's talk a little bit about build quality, and I'm including in that just the overall fit and finish of the motorcycles. Now, both bikes have areas that could be improved upon, but let me tell you what my initial impressions were of the Indian when it arrived here. Some of you know that when the bike first arrived, it had a lot of scratches on the gas tank. Uh, and some other areas as well, but mostly on the gas tank. In fact, I spent the better part of the day uh, polishing out the paint and getting it, try to get it back to some sort of a factory finish so I could shoot video and take pictures of it. Um, I've since learned, after talking to some other Pursuit and Challenger owners, 
that this is not just an issue with my bike. The, 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 the clear coat on these bikes is very, very soft. And as I mentioned in my review, uh, you, you probably are going to want some form of paint protection on this uh, motorcycle. The other thing I noticed on the Pursuit was that trunk liner. I mentioned that in my review, and I just find it inexcusable that that, which is nice that they included that kind of fuzzy liner in the trunk, but it has a big gap in the front. It just kind of flops around. I would say as far as build quality, overall fit and finish, I think they're both quality motorcycles. Don't get me wrong. I didn't feel any rattles or hear any parts rattling when you go down the street or anything like that. But I do think the overall fit and finish and the build quality, the Honda Goldwing, may be a little bit better. So I'm giving the point to Honda for that. Now I am going to give another bonus point to Indian for having a trunk that's so easy to remove. If you want to turn this bike into a bagger, it's relatively simple. You may have to take the saddlebags off, but that's pretty easy too. Looks like you can get the trunk off in about 10 or 15 minutes. Much, much easier than on the Honda Goldwing, which probably could take you half a day. So kudos to Indian for that. So after watching this video, you're excited. You're going to go out and you're going to buy one of these motorcycles. How much are you going to pay? Well, the 2022 Honda Goldwing Tour Model DCT, like I have, but the newer model, the 2022, has a manufacturer suggested retail price of $29,500. But the Indian has a suggested retail price of $32,999. So let's just say $30,000 versus $33,000. So about $3,000 more for the Indian. So I'm going to have to say Honda gets a point on value and price. So this is how I score these two motorcycles. But as always, it's not really a question of which one of these is the better bike. Personally, I think these are both great motorcycles. The real question is, which bike is better for you? If I were going to cheat on my Honda Goldwing, the Indian Pursuit is the bike I would like to have a long-term affair with. So who do I think the Indian Pursuit is a good fit for? Well, if you're a V-twin guy and you're looking for a modern, high-tech alternative to a Harley, especially like the Road Glide, then you definitely should consider the Indian Pursuit. But even if you're not necessarily a V-Twin guy, if you like that relaxed, low-seat riding position this motorcycle offers, I don't think you're going to find a more comfortable, top-of-the-line touring bike. I want to emphasize again how impressed I was with this motorcycle. It's powerful, comfortable, great handling, and without question, the best tech I've seen on any bike so far. So did you enjoy this video? If so, please click the like button. Do you think I was fair and accurate in my evaluation? If you do, or if you don't, let me know in the comments down below. Some of you own a Goldwing, some of you own a Pursuit, and some may own both. So please weigh in with your thoughts in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and remember, ride often, but always ride safe.